Okay, so notice a few things. When we looked at money demand, we knew that we, we could talk about what are the factors that affect the demand for money. And it's pretty easy to understand. When interest rate is high, money demand is low and vice versa. Similarly, when income is high, money demand is high, vice versa. It makes intuitive sense. When we looked at money supply, all we could say about this is that this is controlled by the government and the government can decide to increase money supply or decrease money supply. And there really isn't a market force that's determining what MS will be, which is fine. But the question is that when government is increasing money supply and when government is decreasing money supply, how exactly do they do this? So when they're decreasing money supply, it's not a case that government goes over to every house and takes some money away. Similarly, when we say that government is trying to increase the money supply in the economy, obviously we are not saying that government just hands out money to the people and that increases money supply. So how does the government increase or decrease money supply? They do it through something called open market operations. Okay. So let me give you a few examples. Well, two examples. So first one is called expansionary monetary policy. And second one is called a contractionary monetary policy. Okay, so what are these? Just to remember what this is, when the government is uh, implementing an expansionary monetary policy, what they're trying to do is increase the money supply in the economy. And when they're implementing a contractionary monetary policy, they're trying to decrease the money supply in the economy. Okay, how do they do that? Let's look at number one first. So suppose the government starts to buy bonds. Okay, so you can decide that you're going to hold what you have as either money or as bonds. So let's say you've made that decision. You're holding a certain amount of money as currency or in your checkable deposit account. And at the same time, you're also holding some bonds. Now the government starts to buy, buy up these bonds. So when the government buy this bond, what will they do? The government gives you money and takes your bond. And that's it. If you look at number Two, what the government is going to do is they're going to sell bonds. When they're selling bond, what are they doing? The government gives you a bond and take money from you. So basically all that the government has to do is buy bonds from you or sell bonds from you and when the government is buying up bonds they're effectively injecting money into the economy and when the government is selling bonds they're effectively taking money away from the economy. So the question is, 
why will they be able to do this? You have already decided based on the interest rate that you're going to hold this much money and this much bond. However, that ratio, whatever that ratio may be, you've made that decision. Now, just because the government is buying or selling bonds, why will you decide to move away from what you were doing and decide to hold more or less bonds? That happens because when the government is buying bonds over here, what they're also doing is they're, so when the government is buying bond, what they're also doing, now notice what's happened. When the government wants to buy the bonds, they've suddenly increased the demand for the bond. When demand for bonds go up, when demand for anything goes up, what happens? Prices go up. So bond prices go up. And when bond prices go up, the interest rate falls. We're going to look at the calculation, don't worry. And now similarly, when government is trying to sell bonds, what has happened in the market? The supply of bonds have suddenly increased. When supply of anything goes up, what happens? Prices goes down. So bond prices go down. And when bonds are cheaper, that means interest rate rises. Okay, so I'm expecting that this part is not clear to all of you. You understand why the government buying or selling bonds will increase the price or decrease the price of bonds, but you don't see the connection between interest rate. Okay, so I'm going to explain that right now, but before you do that, why don't you just pause the video for a few minutes and try to figure it out on your own. Take five minutes, take 10 minutes, take two hours if you want to, however long you want to, and try to figure out why the bond price is going up means that interest rate will be falling, and why bond price is going down means that interest rate will be rising. And once you've done that, you can come back and look at